You're muted, Michael. Ha, look at that. Today's January 6th. Here we are. I'm still muted. Michael, wow, um, more than one you're way. muted. Awesome. I don't, I don't know if that's good okay. or bad. You're seeing a lot of stuff there. <laughs> hey, welcome, everybody. Today is January 6th. You all know that. It's a lot of fun out there in the world. Um, but hopefully we've got good news here. I heard I heard a little bird say that we had good news. So. Oh, those clowns will be back in session in an hour. <laughs> Well, on the on the more local front, uh, who who do we want to go first, Chris Vare or uh, Ken? Chris V wants to go first. Sweet, let's do it. All right, so cheers. <laughs> um, the beer has been opened early today, uh, in conjunction with Mr. Mr. Smith. Um, I believe we have fixed the microphone issue. Um, yeah, it, I it. I changed a C program, which I haven't done, and I'm not even sure how long, but um, but I did in port, in port audio. Basically, what we did was uh, we we put a I found a patch online for port audio that um, takes the return code that was causing the failure and um, and skirts around it using something called an X run that I, I still don't know what that is, but it's working. <laughs> Um, my microphone has been running now for a half an hour. Um, Me too. And uh, every time it gets that um, that error code, it just uh, restarts the audio and keeps going. So I think we're in good shape. Um, it's not the cleanest of fixes, but it is what we have. Um, and I will post my fix to the Panticore Dev channel after this meeting, and hopefully we'll be able, we'll include this. Um, the other thing we found uh, today is that um, there's a lot of defaults in not only our code, but in the speech recognition code um, that are not suitable to our microphone. Um, so we actually, I actually went into some, to some library code and changed it as well. Um, so the defaults are for 16-bit um, rates, um, but we have a... 32-bit uh, rate, not only a 32-bit rate, but a float 32-bit rate. So it took us a while to figure that out. So that's in there, and I also um, we also changed the sample um, the sample rate to match the microphone. So um, and the result is that the failure that was occurring frequently now occurs with much less frequency, and when it does occur the um we have a patch that it gets it gets around it. Um, so yes, I think we're in great shape with the microphone. So that was my day today. The uh, the underlying data piece of data, the underlying data set that we use for training, is that data set in the same at, at the same bit rate with the same uh, 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 bit there order. Is that's a good question. Um, I do not know. The answer is no. They're primarily 16 kilohertz. Yeah, I thought they were 16 kilohertz, like 16-bit mono or something. I mean, they weren't. They weren't particularly sharp uh, audio. Well, that's, that's because they were coming from an old Pi. Um, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, complaining about the data. I'm, now I'm you have, asking. but now you have a high-end um, audio studio level hat delivering your your audio so yeah. the answer to your, the answer to your question because i know where my you're question. going with this is yeah we my can question down sample we can down sample from 30 from uh 32 bit to 16 bit and it'll be a lot cleaner than if we up sampled from 16 or 8 to anything so um i don't believe it's going to be an issue in training uh okay. because i believe it's converted anyway in the training code but I can verify that. But uh, well, there is code know. like this in the precise that um, Chris Gesling pointed out too that we probably need to look at it as well, right? Correct, correct. That's going to need some uh, addressing in the runner. There's some hard coded values there. But but Josh, the answer is we're better off with higher fidelity samples, and worst case, we can run them through a down sampling algorithm and bring yeah, them. Yeah, my, okay. my question was primarily: Can our exist it? Can we improve our existing model by improving the fidelity of the data set and then running it against another training, another tra running it through another training cycle? 
Perhaps. And, and the other concern, obviously, is when you train against 16K samples and you get 40K, 48K input, how well is that going to match up? So those are all TBD. Um, but, you know, today is a, uh, a good day to celebrate. <laughs> good. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's great news. So uh, we're able to move move into getting the rest of the demo working. Um, yeah. So tomorrow I'll be so back on to the Just two quick stuff. questions on it. Can we, um, are we, have we, have we, do we understand, you said something about like, you know, I don't really know what that next, next run or whatever the, the patch thing was. Can we, uh, we need to do some, you know, basic checks about where that code's coming from and what it's doing and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, then the other one, just want to make sure, are we changing hard coded values in the, in, you know, precise? runner and stuff or are we dynamically loading those now from the configuration so that so, you know, so there's two answers to that the first, the first is as chris mentioned we had to go into some modules some python modules and hard code some stuff change some hard coded stuff to match our hardware and we're not sure that that's absolutely necessary so the answer to your question is we just don't know we're going to need another day to test with it and run with it uh, figure out the minimalistic uh, changes necessary to get where we're at. Um, and by the way, this is a workaround. It's a Band-Aid because we know we're still getting overruns and it'd be good to make them go away since we weren't getting them before. But that yeah, being the said... The patch I implemented is actually getting pulled into like Debian and Ubuntu and stuff too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that just, being just, said, this is a... We're not the only people with this problem. Far from it, actually. Right. This is a valid workaround for now until we can address those issues at a deeper level. Um, you know, it remains to be seen what it'll ultimately um, turn out during our recognition when we run it. But it was good progress. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. But it's good progress. And we have a little bit more to go to get it over the finish line. Um, yeah, there's some changes that have made to core and to some configs. And I mean, there's what I have on my device is all hacked right now. It yep, needs yep. to be kind of unhacked and, and yeah, that's, that's tomorrow's work probably. Yeah, yeah, we have a true monkey patch on our hands. Uh, so yeah, I mean, um, we don't know yet, Chris. Uh, the, the patch comes from a Debian upstream. So we feel pretty confident that if Debian incorporated it, it's not going to cause any troubles. And the, the X run Chris was talking about is basically anytime you get an unrecoverable or what they consider a uh, overrun or underrun error, that's what the X run stands for. X is under or over, and it's an over or underrun error. They used to just um, assert out. What this does is ignore the assert, reset the ALSA device, and continue along its merry way. So, you know, less than ideal but better than where we were yesterday and something we can probably go to market with initially. Awesome. Yeah, what he said. I'm very happy. I would crack a beer if it wasn't 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that, that is very good news. And, but like everyone's noted, it does seem like it's a patch. So I've taken a, uh, a ticket in Jira and assigned it to Ken. You can, add details and reassign it as appropriate. I just don't want okay. to lose track of it. We don't have to, you know, we can prioritize it as necessary, but I just didn't want to lose track of the issue. Um, great. So, uh, Ken, do you have anything to, to add on your side or other things that are? No, no, no. I just held uh, Chris's beer while he solved the problem. All right. Sounds good. Well, I'm glad you stuck with it then. Uh, to be fair, Ken pointed me in the right direction. <laughs> Uh, great. Well, let's go over to Gez then. Uh, am I? God damn. There we go. Um, yeah, so I, I was doing some investigation on this front as well. Um, I have set up a meeting with Panacore for Thursday, not Friday, because your Friday makes it like, you know, just before midnight on Friday night in Europe, which is a pretty brutal thing. Um, and assuming we get this in, then we should have, um, 
uh, we should we should very much be able to do a new demo um, to show the progress. Uh, I did some investigation around the Wi-Fi setup um, and tapping into XDG across containers um, in Pentacore, uh, which seems possible, but I am chatting with them about yeah the best ways to do that. Um, uh, particularly because it's on the system debuff, so we, we don't want to sort of, you know, just expose that to everything under the sun. Um, but in the interim, I'm just going to uh, get the rest of it set up so that it's, it's in the image, it's getting pulled into the image in time for the demo and, and it might just be on a timer to start with until we, until we get them um, triggering off the debuff messages properly. Um, but at least we'll be able to see it working and um, can kind of move forward on that. Um, other than that, uh, there's uh, oh, been a really cool project coming from the community called Magil to Magil. You know the, um, what's the name from Star Trek? Uh, anyway, uh, it's a, it's a front end framework. Um, they've, they've, they've hooked up, uh, they hooked into the, to the message bus and doing lots of stuff with Amazon Video and and YouTube and and uh, and Cody and and all that sort of stuff um, on a desktop. So uh, it's a cool little project. So I just wanted to give it a bit of a shout out. Um, I'll I'll post a link in the team chat as well. Um, yeah. So for today, we I'm going to get that Wi-Fi stuff in. I've been working on some VoIP conf stability things. We're seeing, still seeing errors like randomly pop up. Um, part of that is because we haven't done a release of core in a long time. So the chain, the bug fixes that we have been doing aren't actually being run in our VoIP conf uh, thing. Um, but the Mark II is really the priority at the moment. So, um, but as soon as we can get back to doing a release, that would be good. Um, 2102 is coming up pretty quickly anyway. So I think that what we'll end up doing is doing one point release in 2008 um, with just all of the bug fixes and then do any of the um, breaking changes for 2102. That is me. Okay. That sounds great. Um, Derek. Hey all. Uh, see, so today we uh, we had a little meeting with um, Joe, our uh, <clears throat> assembler down in Florida, and uh, Michael might talk a little bit more about that. But some of the things I was doing, kind of, um, to help Johnny uh, mostly get prepared for stepping in and helping with that, is uh, putting together, finishing the spec documents for all the purchase parts, and. Um, getting everything ready to label all of that stuff and um, kind of pass that knowledge on to me so that he can assist in um, the, uh, you know, the handoff to, to Joe. So, you know, like a lot of those spec sheets we didn't have for the different parts and stuff. So gathering together all the information that's necessary to understand what they are and, and communicate that. Um, I also had to make a change to our laser cut part uh, this morning. There was some issues with the file, so I fixed that. And uh, I got the audio chopped up um, for the um, for the new onboarding uh, walkthrough stuff. So at some point, I'll have to hand that off to I assume to guess to. So we might need to have a meeting soon to talk a little bit about that. Um, or I can just send an email. And uh, tomorrow, I uh, so I got received the uh, two boards from Kevin, and um, I, I would love to to fire these up tomorrow with working mics. So um, let me know if you guys get that into something that I can get my hands on too, and. Uh, I'll throw them to, in, into some laser cut enclosures and we'll have two more. Yeah, two more just, units. just depends on how long it takes the Panacore guys to integrate some of this stuff. Into the sure, team. sure. 
Yeah, that's what that's what I'm up to. Okay. Well, theoretically, uh, if you push your changes up to the repo, don't they get them by you know midnight? One of the changes is something they're going to have to apply to, to the change to the port audio. Something they're going to have to do themselves. Um, anything we do to core, which we'll we will do tomorrow. Um, yes, you're correct. Okay, got it. Um, all right. If we can, if we can get all the details of that to like you know down this evening, uh, then they'll have all of their tomorrow to work on that. And uh, yeah, if it's just a patch to port audio, it should be pretty quick. Like I don't see any issue in getting in, getting any changes in in a single day. Yeah, I'll, I'll write a post to the Panacore Dev Channel um, after this meeting. Wait. Uh, so, Derek, just to clarify, did you only receive two of the SJ201 boards? Yes, I've got okay. one for Chris and one for myself. And okay. then Kevin sent uh, one to Ken directly, which hopefully he got. And then he sent one to Pantacore directly. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's where, that's where we're at. I think he had more, uh, he could put more together, but that's that's the amount that he was able to get done. Right, right. Okay, yeah, I was expecting two more. So um, I think uh, he's trying to deal one, with One the... One came to me. So. Oh, you've got it? Oh. No, I didn't. No, I don't have it yet. I've got yeah, a tracking yeah. number there. Right. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, was, I forgot I was, that. Um, all right, great. Okay, I was expecting another one for rollover, but we'll, uh, I'll check in with him. He was having some trouble with the Panticore shipping and customs and some nonsense. So um, I'll check in with him uh, after this. Um, uh, Josh, do you have anything you want to add? Nothing on the development side. Right. OK. Yeah, uh, likewise, I mean, the meeting Derek alluded to uh, was just a check in with our fulfillment partner, uh, crossing the uh, T's, dotting the I's, making sure we've got everything lined up so we can get the units out expeditiously once uh, all the parts have arrived from the various suppliers. Um, so that's looking good. And um, yeah, that's about that's about all the news there is there. So um, anything uh, people want to bring up outside of status updates or? World news. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, I guess we'll call it there for today and we'll chat again tomorrow.